These are six crucial site analysis diagrams and illustrator to help you understand your site and inform your design decision. The process follows a couple steps and this video will walk you through all of them. And I'll be sharing the most essential pack you can have as an architectural student with 150 symbols and six color palettes. So let's get started. If you think you need to trace your diagrams, think again. I used to use Digimap for this, but it was only for sites in the UK. So a solution for everyone internationally is OpenStreetMap. I also have two other alternatives, which I've mentioned in this video. I'll have it linked in the cards if you want to check it out. But I like this site because the graphic and the information is pretty good. You have different layer options. You can check the cycle map, the transport map, humanitarian, etc. And you can check the key for that specific layer. But some layers don't have a key. When you're ready, go to the share tab and here you can export PNGs, JPEGs, the scale and everything. But because we're using Illustrator, I'm going to export it to SVG and for site analysis, I don't usually export the scale. Right click on the file and open with Illustrator. Your PC or laptop might lag a little bit here because the file has a lot of information. Once it's open, if you click anywhere on the file, you'll have this. Don't panic. Here in the quick actions, you can see ungroup, so ungroup it. Click again to ungroup, delete this layer, and now you can see all of the masks. So select one, select same appearance, and delete. You can see that I can't select individual shapes yet, so there must be another mask. And you can tell there's a mask because I'm selecting on that individual shape, but it's selecting this big rectangle. So I'm going to select it and delete. And now we can select individual shapes. If anyone knows why this is, why this whole process to be able to select shapes, please let me know. Because honestly, I just find it so bizarre. Now we're going to create some layers so that we can organize the file and be able to easily edit the diagrams. Create as many layers as you want. I usually create buildings, canal, green spaces, transport, symbols. And to add the shapes to the layers, I'm first going to select a building, for example. And I'm going to select the same appearance from here. Next to the circle here is a tiny space. Click on that and then drag it to the layer that you want. So it will move it from the map layer onto the buildings layer. You're going to repeat that steps for all of the layers until you have a really clean and organized file. Try selecting by the same appearance, same stroke color, same fill color. It's useful to change the artboard size when you are organizing your layers and you can do this through the artboard tool. And then here you can change the width and the height of your artboard. I'm going to go with 420, 420. I love a square diagram and that becomes an A3 square. So it's a good resolution and quality. You don't have to worry that much into quality and resolution with Illustrator because it is vector shapes. So any size you export it to, it will still be sharp. To hide all of this extra fluff, you can go into view and trim view. This is how my layers look at the end, or should I say beginning of the diagrams. Anywho, I created an essential pack for architects to help them with creating diagrams, site analysis, concept diagrams, pretty much anything. It has 150 symbols and six color palettes. It's truly an essentials pack. And I'm giving you the illustrator file because you can customize it to your own diagrams. So you can select any shape, select same appearance, select a color from the swatches and you're done. So let's start working on one layer at a time. I'm choosing this color palette and I'm gonna copy and paste it to the other file. If you click on this circle here, it will select everything in the layer and then click I on the keyboard to sample the green color. And we're gonna do that with all of the layers. So symbols, I want it to be this navy color. You can also press Ctrl A on your keyboard to select everything. I'm quite happy with the colors of the transport layer because they're neutrals. As for the canal, you can see that it's a line, a shape and a stroke. So I'm going to object and expand. This will turn the fill and the stroke into individual shapes and then I can go into the Pathfinder, click on this one and this will merge everything into one singular shape. I'm going to do the same thing for the roads layer but these white roads, let's change the stroke to grey. I guess I selected these by mistake so I'm going to erase them. After you expand the appearance it'll be quite difficult to clean up the roads so it's best to do that now. Once you're happy with it, you can select all, go to object and expand, then merge them into singular shape using the pathfinder.
So the lines that aren't connected to the main shape, you can erase them quite easily, but if it is connected, you'll have to use the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A, and select the anchor points that you want to erase. So it's not impossible, just a little annoying. I made the roads the lighter grey and the buildings the darker grey, so there's a good contrast. And this is how all of the layers look with the color palette. I think this golden color will be perfect for the site and I'm going to give it a red stroke. If you want to change the essentials pack to a color that's not in your swatches, first use the eyedropper tool to sample in the color and then add it to your swatches. And same way, select the shape, select the same fill color and then click on the swatch color. So now let's add the north arrow. And don't forget to go into file, save as, and then save it as an illustrator file. And with that, we're ready to start the diagrams. Sun path, which is the direction of the sun from east to west. I actually had a comment from someone saying, why would you want to add this? How is this even beneficial? But actually, your consideration of the sun path can really make or break your project. I'm also going to add arrows for the wind direction, for the winter wind and the summer wind. I'm adding two arrows for the stronger or faster wind and a different one for the summer wind. And you can find this information online if you type wind direction, this city or this area, it should come up. Then it's access, which is how you access the site. So I have one from this side, which is the main access. And I have another one. A secondary access from here so you can specify which one is your preferred entrance through your arrow selection and with this pack you have so many arrows to choose from noise pretty self-explanatory I'm adding the symbol in areas where there's a lot of traffic usually and also around schools and just busy roads Nodes, which is a point where two main roads cross and there tend to be a lot of movement and traffic there so you can say that you want to develop that area to become an entrance or a public square and I've shown that with this symbol. Next is views, so when you're in your site, what are your views out? When you're walking towards the site, what could you see? Or when does your building look the most interesting? And I've shown that with this arrow. Add in a few symbols of major train stops, bus stops, and any landmarks around the area. You can also use the chat bubble here to add any information about the site and its location using the text tool. To save this as a JPEG, go into File, Export As, and then make sure that Use Artboard is checked and hit Export. This is how the diagram looks. It's pretty simple to create once you know the basic steps, as you'll see with the rest of the diagram. For starters, the figuring gram map requires two steps. One, to turn off all of the layers. Two, to color in the buildings black. And this diagram shows the relationship between built and unbuilt space. And many urban design approaches relies heavily on the manipulation of this relationship. So don't just do this diagram and ignore it. It's actually really useful. Next, I'm going to analyze natural features. For this, I'll need the canal and the green space layer visible. Add in some trees from the essentials pack and paste in it on my file and you can see how large they are so when I scale it down the strokes of the shape also scale down. So if you click on these three dots, untick, scale, strokes and effects. And now you can scale it back and the stroke will still be the same. Let's draw the outline of the site because I want to analyze existing trees and I'm using the pen tool to draw this shape and then reducing its opacity. There's actually a green space here that OpenStreetMap missed, but it kind of does that. It only captures parks and really big open green spaces. Changing the fill color of the trees and then I can start placing them around the site. This is how the diagram looks at the end. Another thing you should analyze is permeability. You can go into a lot more detail than I did. This is just a tutorial for YouTube. But it's basically like bus stops, train station, 
pedestrian movement and traffic. So I've added symbols for parking spaces, bus stops and train station. The train lines are already in the diagrams as well as the cycling routes. I'm adding this circle here to map out a 5 minute walk and so it shows how the site has good transportation links because within 5 minute walk you can catch the train or the bus and there's a lot of parking spaces. Let's draw a line for pedestrian access from the train station as well as the bottom of the map. And I'm going to add the main and secondary access on this diagram as well because I feel like it's relevant. I really like this diagram but unfortunately there is no quicker way to do this which is land use or context. So you'll need to know the types of buildings around your site and you can find that information through Google Maps or Google Street View. So you'll go through one building at a time and specify whether it's industrial, commercial, residential, retail, mix, etc. And then you'll color in each building one by one and for this diagram I've chosen the same color palette. You can choose a different one of course, but I just wanted everything to be cohesive. And eventually you should have something that looks like this. You can also use the symbols from the essentials pack for the building types, but I just like a minimal diagram. I've shown you a few basic ones, but of course you can analyze things that are directly related to your concept. So this is about modern ruins and derelict buildings. So you can see here that I'm analyzing something different, which is urban decay and edges. So I highlight in the buildings that are derelict around the site and I'm using the pen tool to draw the outline of the site. As for edges, these streets specifically are using really tall fences or hedges as a way to add more privacy into their land, which creates segregation and boundaries between the building and its neighboring properties. I'm communicating this with thick lines. And this is the final diagram. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. Of course, there are a lot more things to analyze and I just can't fit them all in one video. But these are the basics and it should get you to a good start. You can also look at Pinterest for our presentation inspo. And if you have any diagrams, illustrations, renderings you'd like me to recreate, DM me on Instagram or email me and I'll be sure to make a video specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.